When this car was released back in 2003, literally every human being was crying about how it looks. Especially the BMW fanboys. Compared to its predecessor, it was a massive shift in design and conservative audience just couldn't accept the looks and the new tech that was implemented in this ugly looking thing. Yeah, these are the words that people used to describe this car when it was brand new. Bengal butts, younger brother. The ugly, as people say. The mighty. Say hello to one of the most controversial BMWs ever made. E60 5 Series. My name is Alex and you are watching CCL. Firstly, I will tell you about this beautiful design. Yes, I truly believe this car is gorgeous. And please don't throw rocks at me for saying that. I will also tell you who designed this car. And you are probably thinking right now, man, this is obvious. It was Chris Bangle. Nope. You are incorrect. It was different person, not Chris Bangle. I will also tell you about the tech that was heavily criticized at that moment. <laughs> I drive. I will also <laughs> I will also speak about the engines and transmissions that are good and which should you better avoid. And finally, I will tell you about one of my favorite cars to be honest. The crazy sexy BMW M5 and why it is so special. Oh, and I almost forgot. Uh, in the end of this video, I will also tell you whether you should or shouldn't get one. And if my answer is positive, which one should you get? I will also do a fast and basic sketch of BMW E65 series. Today, when the majority of cars from the factory are really boring, BMW fanboys are crying about the new M3, M4, 4 series and the new 7 series. Yeah, and they're also probably crying about the facelifted X7 because it looks quite strange from the front. But this isn't the first time BMW introduced a controversial design. Back in 2003, when the new 5 series was shown to the public, it received a lot of hate and criticism. This 5 series is known as E60, if it's a sedan, or as a E61, if it's a wagon, or touring, as BMW calls it. If we compare the E60 with its predecessor, the E39, we can say that they look completely different. E39 is quite elegant, classy, and sporty at the same time. It was, and still is, one of the favorite BMW designs of all time. And then they get this. <laughs> E60 looks completely different from E39. They look like they are not even related. People criticize this car for its headlights, which remind women's eyes with big eyelashes. Some also noticed that this car has huge rear end, but I don't understand what's the problem with this one. Doesn't like everyone like big fat juicy ass and headlights. They're beautiful. At least the car has some character. Not like modern cars. I actually think that E60 looks quite special and unique. The soft edges and curves of E39 5 series were replaced by sharp lines and a much more brutal look. But at the same time, the newer design is a bit more feminine in a very good way. If we look at the successor, the F10, and the new 5 series, which is called G30, we can see that they don't stand out from the crowd and look quite bland. I almost forgot about a fancy term that BMW introduced together with E60. Flame surfacing. As BMW defines it, flame surfacing is essentially the use of body counters that create concave and convex lines. Hard edges are mixed with swooping curves and then the result is, yep, that's right, E60 5 series. There were also complaints about the wave and the size of a new 5 series. People were saying that the car got bigger and heavier, which is not entirely true. Yes, the new 5 series is a bit larger than the predecessor, the E39 5 series, but to be honest, it is about from 50 to 100 kilograms lighter than the 5 series E39, depending on which engine and what tech is installed in a car. You're probably thinking, how can a bigger car 
with more tech be lighter? And that's a great question. Well, the answer is aluminum. The whole front of the car, engine bay, hood, fenders, these parts are made from aluminum or aluminum depending on where you live. Now you know why E65 series has no rust on front fenders, which is quite the opposite with its predecessor, the E39 5 series and with the E46 3 series. Now probably every E46 and E39 owner will be writing in comments, my car has no rust, what are you talking about? But let's be real. The interesting part about this story is that people were blaming Chris Bangle because he hot, hot, because they thought he's the one who designed this beauty. Bangle was the head of design at that moment and he was already a well-known automotive designer, but he is not the one who designed E60. Yeah, I'm not joking. The man who is responsible for this radical design change is an Italian designer, Davide Arcangeli. He is the criminal who used his pen to vandalize the 5 series. He was a very talented dude and the design team really enjoyed working with him. His design was approved without any doubt, but the sad part about this whole story is that Arcangel didn't manage to see his creation in real life. He died of leukemia. Arcangeli's death encouraged other BMW designers to transform his design into a real car. His design wasn't changed not because the whole design team just wanted to honor him, but because they were really impressed by his sketches. This means that E60 can be put on a very tiny list of cars, which designs were not altered at the stage of production, which happens very rarely. This is a cool fact to know. So, E60 BMW owners, every time when you get inside your heavily criticized car, just remember that it's actually quite special and unique. I think that E39 has more common in terms of design with F10 5 series rather than with E60. And you will probably agree with me on this one. During the Bengal era, BMW overtook Mercedes as the global leader in premium car sales. This shows that when he was in charge of BMW design department, BMW became even more successful than it was before. From 2003 till 2010, which are the years when E60 was produced, BMW sold more than 1.3 of BMW 5 series, sedans and tourings. Yeah, if we look at the sales figures of E39, we can see that BMW sold more than 1.5 millions of these cars. But let's not forget about the 2008 crisis and rising competition from other manufacturers. The car received facelift in 2007, which includes new taillights that were now LEDs. Front lights were almost the same, but the cornering section were now LED as well. And the car received a new front bumper as well, but in my opinion, the pre facelift bumper looks a little bit better. But anyways, the M Sport bumper is the same, which looks beautiful even today. Here's a bit of ASMR action for you guys. The changes could also be visible inside of the E65 series. We received new front door panels, here are the pre facelift ones, and here are the facelift ones. The center console received new buttons, but basically it's the same console. And the shifter was heavily modernized and it looks beautiful even today. Together with the shifter, you could also get shift pedals, which were only available for an M5 before the facelift. The interior is completely different from the E39 and it is not driver oriented anymore and looks quite elegant like Mercedes interiors. What's not nice is the quality of these interiors. Man, older BMWs were made from much better materials. Their interiors were much better built. The buttons were more nice to touch. The old interiors were amazing, but this one is a different story. From 2007, the interior quality got a little bit better, but it was still not at the same level as in the older BMWs. And the standard steering wheel was still f ugly. That is why everyone put M Sport steering wheel in their cars, in their E60s, to be precise. 
The weird CCC was replaced by TITS, which is a much better and easier system to use. It works more quickly, it is easily understandable, and you don't get angry while using it. In case you don't understand what I'm talking about, CCC and TITS are different iDrive systems. CCC is car communication computer and CIC is car information computer. That's what they mean. And TITS is a newer iDrive system and CCC is the old one. But anyways, both of these are very old. E60s are known for their electrical faults, but as people say, after the facelift, there are less problems with that. That's a great thing. And the car also received a lot of new tech, like adaptive headlights, lane departure warning, night vision, and even regenerative braking. And the active cruise control function was upgraded to bring the vehicle to a complete stop and accelerate from stationary which is a cool tech back in 2007 for a 5 series, not 7 series. As every other BMW from that era, E60 has a lot of different engine options and it is really hard to decide which one is the best for you. So let me help you. I will start from petrol engines and I will also point out which engines were fitted in a facelifted model and which were fitted in a pre-facelift model. So let's start from N46 and N43 engines, which are 2-liter 4-cylinder engines that are not powerful at all and they are very unreliable. These are just, I'll be honest, these are crappy engines and you should, you must avoid these engines. Every time when someone puts their E90 or E60 on sale in any forum on Facebook with a 2 liter N43 or N46 engine, people just laugh and they write comments like, good luck selling this crap, these are crappy engines, avoid them, please, don't buy a facelifted 520i. Next is a really great engine, M54. It came in 2.2 liters, 2.5 and 3 liter and it was fitted to a pre-facelift models only from 2003 till 2005. So 2.2 was fitted to a 520i, as I said the pre-facelift model, uh, 2.5 engine was fitted in a 525i and a 3 liter was fitted in a 5 Free zero i These are great engines, reliable, robust. This engine is great, but it's also not perfect. It has some flaws, for example, uh, water pump and thermostats, they can fail at some point. You can have problems with this valve, but they're like, on the internet, they're like uh, repair kits when you change the plastic bits inside the valve for the metal one, and then you don't have problems with this valve at all. You can also have problems with Vanos and probably that's it. It may sound like a very serious problem, but trust me, comparing to a newer engines, this is a really reliable engine. It has some flaws, but they are like, don't happen that often. If you take care of this engine, it will run. Next is N52. 6 cylinder 3 liter or 2.5 engine great engine not as reliable as M54 but if you find a low mileage car then you should be okay yeah it has some problems like uh, water pump sometimes fails you have problems with vanos but overall it's an okay engine still not as great as M54 but produces slightly more power if you compare 530 with M54 and 530 with N52, they're like 20 kilowatts uh, difference in power, which is a healthy figure, but still, I personally, I would go for a more reliable engine, but it is quite hard to find a 530i with M54 engine. So as I said, if you find the low mileage N52, you will be okay. 
While people in US received their facelifted models with N52 engines, people in Europe received a new engine, N53, which is basically the same engine as N52, but instead of port injection, it uses direct injection. So it means this N53 engine has the same problems as N52 plus unreliable injectors. Uh, this engine was used uh, in 525i and 530i models. It's a 2.5 petrol or 3 liter petrol engine. Then we have N54 engine, which is quite special in the E60, of course. It was offered after 2007, after facelift in 535i model, which was sold only in US. But if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments section below. So yeah, 300 horsepower, 400 newton meters of torque. This is a healthy number, even by today's standards. But the problem is that this engine is quite unreliable. And it's quite funny when I hear people say that this is a German 2JZ, wow, it's so great. No, it's not. 2JZ, the engine that was built by Toyota, is really reliable and can hold big power numbers. But N54 is quite unreliable. Two turbos, yeah, this car is a twin turbo, they constantly fail. The fuel injectors, they fail. People fit fuel injectors from a newer engine, N55, because these, uh, these injectors are quite reliable, but the original N54 injectors, they're really unreliable. So we have other problems like fuel pump that constantly fails. We have leaking fuel, uh, oil filter gasket. We have leaking oil pan gasket. And as I said before, we have failing turbos. So why people say it's a great engine? I don't know. And lastly, we have N62 engine, which was fitted in pre-facelift, 545i, and facelift cars, 540 and 550i. So it is 4 liter, 4.4, and 4.8 engines. Uh, they all have the same problems. Oil leaks from all over the places. This is a really bad engine, and I recommend you to avoid it. I have E63 6 series, which is basically the same car as 5 series, but instead of 4 doors, it has 2. It's a 645 model, so it means it has 4.4 N62 V8 unreliable engine. Oh, and also it's a Eastern European spec. You can see that it has no side mirrors, probably because they were stolen during the night. And let's inspect this car, this toy. Oh, even the toy has engine oil all over the engine bay. Oh, even underneath the car. Look at it. Yeah, you can see it. Damn, this looks bad. Hmm, olive oil. Strange. Now let's talk about diesels. To be honest, I freaking love diesels. I'm from Eastern Europe, most of us drive diesel BMWs and it's quite easy to maintain them, they're more economical than petrol engines and they're even more reliable than petrol engines, which is quite strange. Let's start from the pre-facelift diesel models and then I will speak about facelift diesel cars. So let's start from M47, 2 liter 4 cylinder engine that was used only in pre-facelift cars. It's a very reliable engine, reliable as hell. It can cover more than half a million kilometers. And yeah, it almost has no problems. You need to remove swirl flaps. Uh, sometimes turbos fails because of the very big mileage and you need to replace uh, engine breather at least every 30, 40 or 50,000 kilometers because that is why turbos fail. Next engine is my favorite. It is M57 six-cylinder diesel engine. It was fitted in pre-facelift and facelift cars. But right now, let's speak about pre-facelift models. So it is a 2.5 or 3-liter diesel engine. 2.5 was fitted in 525D 
and free liter could be found in 530D and 535D. All of these engines are cast iron and 535D has two turbos. Other engines have single turbo. So yeah, 535D produces 200 kilowatts, which is a 272 horsepower and 560 newton meters of torque, which is a really healthy number. As I said, this is a very reliable engine. Yeah, uh, because these engines have a lot of mileage, you will have to rebuild turbos, especially those two that are fitted to 535D. Take out swirl flaps, uh, sometimes exhaust manifold can crack, but it is a really easy fix. Just change the exhaust manifold and that's it. Timing chain is really reliable. It can last half a million kilometers which basically means that this uh, timing chain is for the lifetime of this engine. But because these engines are indestructible, they can cover more than half a million kilometers, which is really nice. Modern engines can do that. These engines have solenoid fuel injectors, which are very reliable and easily serviceable, which is really good thing to know because when you have a diesel engine, you want to make it more power and when your fuel injector fails, you can fix it. Now let's dive in the world of facelifted E60 diesel cars and speak about N47, which is a newer engine. It's a two liter four cylinder diesel engine, which is quite economical and it has 120, 120 kilowatts, which is not a lot, but as I said, this engine is quite economical. It's a great engine, but it has one major problem. It is snapping timing chain. That is why I recommend you if you want to buy this car or own one to change your timing chain when the mileage is more than 200,000 kilometers. And finally we have M57, the facelifted one. There are no more 2.5 diesel, all cars are 3 liter diesels even the 525D. So yeah, it's quite funny. 525D has a 3 liter diesel engine. 530 and 535D, they also have 3 liter diesel engines. So 525, 530, they have single turbo and 535D has two turbos. And 535D, the facelifted one, produces 10 kilowatts more than the pre-facelift car. So the pre-facelift was 270 kilowatts and the facelift is 280 kilowatts. And uh, a bit more torque, 580 newton meters of torque, which is again a very good number. So why it is not that reliable as the pre-facelift? Well, the block is no more cast iron, it is aluminum. Uh, we have different fuel injectors, which are better for fuel economy, but they're not fixable. You can't service them. So before we had solenoid injectors, now we have piezo injectors. The facelifted M57 received cast iron exhaust manifold, which means no more cracks. But the other problem is timing chain. It is weaker than in a pre-facelift model, and you have to change it every 250,000 kilometers, which is still a normal number. If you want your E60 or every other car to run, I recommend you to change oil every 10 or at least 15,000 kilometers. And it doesn't matter if you have petrol or diesel car. BMW E60 has very reliable manual transmissions. It doesn't matter if the car has Getrak or ZF transmission, all of them are very reliable. I don't have any experience with Getrak, so all I can say is that ZF is a nice transmission. We have ZF S653 and S637. 53 holds 530 Newton meters of torque and goes to a highly powered cars and S637 holds 370 Newton meters of torques and goes to a 
slightly less powerful, less powerful cars. E60 BMWs also have different types of automatic transmissions. There's a good old torque converter, ZF 6HP, and we have different modifications of this transmission. There's a uh, transmission for a lower powered cars and there's a transmission for a highly powered cars and we also have smg2 transmission which if i'm not mistaken only was available as an option for v8 cars and i don't have any experience with smg transmissions but from what i heard they're quite unreliable and they're quite expensive to maintain or change because if it's broke you have to get a new one and lastly, there is SMG free seven speed robotized manual, which was only used in BMW M5. And again, it's quite unreliable and it is very expensive to get a new one. Sometimes this gearbox can cost as much as the whole BMW M5. Suspension of the E60 is quite okay, which is made out of aluminum and it will probably last longer than on the E39, but I highly recommend not to buy cars with active sway bars, because these sway bars bleed and it is costly to repair them. These uh, cars sometimes have cracked uh, drive shaft uh, rubber flex disc and even if it's cracked, it's quite cheap to replace it. Now let's speak about probably my favorite cars, BMW E60 M5, the only M5 that received formula derived V10 5 liter engine. Whew. This is probably the only car that made me interested in this brand and this is why I have this hat right now. And I know this is a quite unreliable car, it has rod, billy, <laughs> rod bearing issues, you have to replace rod bearings every 50,000 kilometers. It has a unreliable SMG free gearbox. Well, there are cars that were built in North, uh, for North American market. There is about, according to some uh, salesman that worked at BMW, there is around 1000 M5 with manual transmissions. And these are the M5s to own. Even if you have a M5 with SMG gearbox, which is quite, uh, the gearbox is quite sluggish and jerky, it's still cool, it's a raw product. Just look at this guy, I mean seriously, look at this video. And that is why people like these cars. If we compare E60 M5 with F10, M5. F10 is like a guy in a suit and E60 is like a Gopnik from Eastern Europe with Adidas tracksuit that knows how to dance hard bus and it's just crazy car. That's why I love E60 M5. It's an unreliable piece of crap that makes me smile every time I look, I see a YouTube video about this car. And to be honest, it's quite special for me because when I was little, uh, wait a minute. So yeah, when I looked like this and I was going from school uh, to a bus stop and E60 M5 just flew right next to me. The sound, it is so addicting. And this is probably the first time when I realized, oh, this is a nice BMW. I was so shocked by it. I was so impressed by this car when I was little. When I went back home, I started Googling, like, what is this car? I just remembered the M5 badge and BMW badge on the uh, rear end of this car. And then when I saw videos online, I was so shocked. And from this age, I don't remember how old I was, but this car was still brand new at that moment. I understand that E55 Mercedes is a much reliable option and it has a lot of power as well and it has a better gearbox, but 
it's not as fun as E60 M5. Maybe I'm wrong. Write your comments and tell me why I'm wrong, but I still believe that S85 V10 5 liter engine in a sedan and if you manage to get a manual gearbox man this is an amazing ride i hope that one day i will own one let's answer the question e60 5 series is it really worth it well i think yeah and if you are thinking about this car for a very long time, I think you should get one before all of them get wrecked, totaled, uh, pissed, tuned by crazy teenagers and so on. I would go with a low spec car because low spec cars has less tech inside to break. And if you live in Europe, I would go with 3 liter diesel, I would probably go with 530D, the pre-facelift model, because it has a more solid engine, it is easily tunable, and 530D has a manual gearbox, and 535D has only auto gearbox available. But there is a one drawback, there is a lot of highly abused 530Ds that are not maintained well. So it is easier to find 525D in a good shape or 535D in a good shape because these are less popular cars. If you live somewhere where there are no diesel E60s available, for example, United States, I would go for a M54 pre-facelift car from 2003 to 2005 or N52 engine. So it will be 528 N52, 530 N52, or 530M54. I hope this video was useful and you enjoyed watching it. Sorry for my Eastern European accent. I'm from Eastern Europe, Lithuania. And as I said, if you enjoyed watching this video, please press like, subscribe to this channel. I will post more content like this. And I'm also planning to film a test drive of E60, in real life of course. So if you are interested in that, please subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and leave a comment. Maybe I said something wrong, maybe I forgot to mention something, I don't know. Comment whatever you want. And again, thank you for watching. And there you have it. Man, this thing looks really bad, 